everybody welcome to the fifth episode of for the law of female thursdays i'm ravi teja i'm a product marketer at netbook cloud regular viewers of ftl thursdays would have heard me speaking questions asking questions in the background in the previous episodes i'm in the foreground today to introduce a very special speaker he's a tech entrepreneur the pioneer of the dot com revolution in asia in the late 90s he created india's first ever internet portal which was later acquired by satyam in 1999 for for a staggering 115 million dollars in one of asia's largest internet deals he then founded netcore which has grown to be one of largest cpas and martech companies in the emerging markets and it is now rapidly expanding in us and europe rajesh jain here is here he is here to talk about and address the most pressing and confronting uh, issue marketers are confronting today the shrinking attention span of humans and how to drive higher engagement via email So without further ado ladies and gentlemen let's welcome Rajesh Jain the founder of Netco Cloud Hello Rajesh sir Thank you Ravi Hello everyone uh, look forward to you, Rajesh, engaging over the next half an hour or so uh, with uh, with everyone uh, so i'm going to speak about how do we energize email engagement uh, email is one of the best roi channels of course as you all know um It's forty years to one ROI, nearly two x of any other channel, and there are two very interesting ideas that we are going to cover today: EMS and atomic rewards. So, <clears throat> the real challenge that most marketers face is that they are in a doom loop of spending, primarily for new customer acquisition, and that's where there is this problem of the leaky bucket, rising ad costs. The new customers being acquired are now not as valuable. uh there are two big disruptions coming in apple's privacy framework uh and uh, the coming death of third party cookies and the other big one is reacquisition by my estimates a third of the ad tech budgets which are being spent today on new acquisition are actually reacquisition so existing customers who churn and then they are reacquired through google and facebook the problem is that brands are getting gooped a lot of the money being spent on google and facebook hurts profits and that prevents the high levels of growth profitable growth that should be there instead what brands need to be seeing is how can they hook customers so instead of gooped brands we need hooked customers we're going to talk about how to make that happen as ravi mentioned our challenge with customers is their attention span like a goldfish a few seconds we've all heard or read about it and that manifests itself in many unread mails ignored mails in the inbox but if brands have to create the foundation for exponential forever profitable growth which is the objective every brand wants to basically build what i call a profit poly a profits monopoly how are they going to happen how are they going to do it today the typical answer is incentivized transactions so you have buy one get one free a 10% off some freebies etc everything to drive transactions and that is where i think marketers are missing uh missing a step uh, uh, uh doing something which i think can be done a lot better so instead of just focusing on transactions marketers need to look at the upstream look at attention engagement and habit that is the secret that is the key to creating hooked customers and subscribers so inbox attention is very important because there are only three ways to get a brand, get a customer back 
onto your website or an app. Either you are a monopoly, like what Coven is in India. We have a phenomenal brand recall like Amazon and Flipkart have, or you need to send out push messages, emails, SMSs, push notifications to get the customer back onto your website and app. And in there, of course, email is the most effective channel. And we're gonna talk about that on how can we drive attention in the inbox. So the challenges we've discussed, the shrinking attention span, how do we solve that problem? What we really need, what marketers need, are opens and clicks. And today the reality is that nearly 85 to 95% of emails are not being opened. So you have response rates of five to 15% on marketing messages, not good enough, that needs to change. Now, there are significant benefits if we can actually get attention in the inbox going. More opens will lead to more clicks, greater engagement, higher retention, which in turn leads to more transactions, habit formation, where customers keep opening your mails, they're looking forward to your communication. Also, it leads to lower churn and inactives and less reacquisition. Now, less reacquisition is very important because that's where the big savings come in. That's where you no longer have to spend that one third money, which is going into the ad tech budgets. If you can do retention right, that's the key to driving profitable growth. At another level, more opens leads to a better email domain reputation, higher inboxing, and in turn, you can now reach out to much more of your inactive database. So there's a lot of value in driving inbox engagement, emails with emails, with opens and clicks. How do we do that? So the focus all along really has been, <coughs> excuse me, the focus all along has been on the post acquisition funnel. It's all about transactions like we saw money, that's where the incentives are. But what about the top of the funnel? How can we get time, attention, engagement habits from customers? Because if we get that time, that is what's going to lead to the money spent. And for that, we need to think of the power of moments. We need to create moments that end customers, delight in, like, and like. So there are two email innovations that I will cover. M's, essentially short for email moments, and microns uh, is a part of the broader atomic rewards idea. Now, Wonderful book by Byron Sharp on how brands grow. Talked a lot about the physical availability of brands. So you look at Coke, you look at Pepsi, they are there all around us. Because for them, the physical presence is very important uh, element of leading to a transaction, to a purchase. The same way in a digital world, brands need to drive mental availability. So that's where the emails, the communications that you're doing become very important. Can we get those few seconds every day? Mental time of customers. So when they want to do a transaction, you are top of the mind. So the idea of M's is to convert this delete mindset that customers have when they look at the inbox into delight. It's a new improved email format. And when you see it, it's a very easy uh, uh, implementation idea for the micro attention customer. Think of short emails. Exactly this size, readable on a single mobile screen, can be read in 15 to 30 seconds. The difference is that they are not promotional, they are informative. Yeah, so they're offering something useful. It's not about look at this, buy this. It's something valuable, which end customers will like. So it's a fresh format outside of transactional and promotional mails. It gives the users an anticipation of something new. It's a story format. So it's sent out in a series, sent every day at the same time. So in short, so how email M's differ from regular emails, short, they work like info nudges, uniquely identified with BIMI and in the subject, maybe with an epsilon or something to tell uh, end users, uh, end customers that it's short and be read very quickly, and hopefully drive open rates and stop being sent out at random intervals, sent out daily at the same time, the delete mindset converts <laughs> excuse me, to a delight mindset. And you can, of course, uh, integrate AMP into it, which makes it more exciting and gamified. And we'll talk about the gamification aspect when we cover atomic rewards.
So these are a few examples, so informative. Now, none of these are happening today, but imagine if these can be done. So you take a brand like Mama Earth. Imagine if they sent you something like this, must haves when you travel with your baby. You'd love to read this, meals like this. You'll even want to probably save them for later reference, but you will open these meals. Help your baby relax with the right massage. And then you can have so short mails again, readable in a single screen, something informative. You can link to a video. You can tell what's coming the next day. You can give other references back on the site. So it's content, but short micro content, which is being used here. Is it okay to use baby powder? Answering a question that people may have. Now, another use case is around pre purchase. So typically, when an item is left in the shopping cart, a crossword or Amazon or someone will, a bookseller, bookseller will send you a typical message saying, you've, you've forgotten this item in your shopping cart. Instead of that, imagine there was a five day series, which basically has day one, an excerpt about the book. Day two, reviews about the book. Day three could be table of contents. Day four, other books by the author. Day five, other books in that category. So you have multiple informative mails which are hopefully guiding the customer towards a purchase. But each mail in itself is valuable. Most of the content may be there on the website. How many of us will read all of this thing? It comes as a push mail, short, in your inbox, you will read it. <coughs> Post-purchase. So imagine you've bought a <coughs> product like Nutribullet. Now for the next say, maybe 10 days, 20 days, 30 days post-purchase, tells you how to make the best use of the product. So imagine this tells you about the functions, how to clean it. Okay, again, maybe linking back to a video. What are the recipes that you can make through the product that you have just bought? Very few brands are actually doing this. They are not spending the time post-purchase to reinforce the brand with their end customers. So 20, 30 days post-purchase can be very, very powerful because that's how you can also drive referrals, word of mouth later on. So M's, think of them as a brand's hotline to customers, short, informative, in a series, in a sequence, and telling the story. Sent at the same time every day, almost like we get mails from the media uh, houses, from New York Times, Wall Street Journal, or Hindustan Times in India, typically becomes a utility in our life, the mail coming in at the same time in your inbox every day. You can almost set the clock, they said they tell the time by when the mail reaches. Same idea. Apply it for brand marketing. And it's a great tool for retention. And we'll talk about that right at the end. The second idea is around microns. It's what we call microns, it's atomic rewards. It's built on the theme of gamification. So many of you all would have probably played uh, or still play uh, Clash of Clans. I started uh, playing it, my son taught me many years ago. Oh, Papa, you got to go and pick up the gold and the elixir and the dark elixir uh, every day, um, every few hours. So games do a great job of getting you back periodically, even if it's for a few minutes, um, uh, pretty much every day. So they have challenges which they set. Um, and then you have rewards for, for actions that you can do. So gamification is a very powerful theme, which is there. And uh, on habits, uh, James Clear's book, Atomic Habits, actually is a the bestseller, of course. Uh, and talks about how to create habits. Now, if we can apply these same ideas, habit formation, gamification, we can come up with an idea like atomic rewards. So micro incentives to produce remarkable outcomes, to change customer habits, instead of them ignoring the communication that you're sending, you can get them to essentially open those and experience the rewards that come in. So small nudges towards the actions that you desire. So the basic idea is to get customers to pay attention, pay them for their attention, because otherwise you are only going to end up paying Google and Facebook probably 100 times more for them at a later time when they, when they churn out. So might as well pay a small amount to them now, keep the relationship going, keep the engagement going. Hopefully that leads to transactions. So here's a simple example. This is a service that we run called Vartam. <coughs> We send out short emails. We have 30, 40, 30 plus uh, content channels, uh, news, health tips, recommendations, uh, sports news, yoga, uh, liberal philosophy, et cetera, and different uh, themes. Now, there are two things which are different about this mail. In the subject, right at the top, 
there's a mu and there's a number. The mu tells the recipient that, look, this is a mail which has rewards in it. So when you open the mail, you'll get some goodies out of it. In this case, maybe one mu, okay, one point for opening it. Then the number, 972 essentially tells me that it is a genuine mail as an end customer, because that's the number of mu that I have. So if someone just puts mu and some random number 10, 15, I can ignore it because it's probably not going to be the, a, a genuine uh, mail. Once you open the mail, right at the bottom of the mail, you can see the number increment. So 972, one point added goes to 973. And as a brand, you have full control. Whom do you give rewards to? How much you give? You can differentiate customers. Someone can get one mu and you have a great offer for someone else that, you, that person you can actually reward with 10 mu or 20 mu. You can also reward mu for clicks inside of an email. Now, the good thing is that typically uh, people are wired such that if you're getting something, you'll want to scroll down in the mail and look at what uh, whether you've actually got it or not. And that way, at least two things happen. You're opening the mail and you're scrolling through to the end of the mail. Hopefully, and that's up to the now, the designers, the content creators, something there will catch your attention. And that's what we want as marketers. Now, typically we see this in mails, you know, you get this, um, you know, buy these phones, et cetera. Now imagine, uh, of course you can click through to wish list now. Imagine if the clicks were rewarded with 15 mu. And maybe after that, you can even have a question which says answer one question about the features that you saw and we'll reward you even more. So the more time you get people to engage, the likelihood of purchase increases. And that is the key idea behind atomic rewards. The, the top of the funnel, attention, engagement, and habit creation. Atomic rewards can actually nudge everywhere. Uh, you can use them in push messages, emails, SMSs, even push notifications. You can incorporate these ideas in the properties, uh, website or app, and of course in the physical world with the QR codes. So you can give small incentives there, all linked with an email ID or a mobile number at the back end. So, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. This would work across brands. So users would then accumulate this and then there would be a new shop where they can redeem it. So almost like our airline miles work, same basic idea, like a loyalty program, but it's a pan brand loyalty program, but focused to begin with on attention in the inbox. So now here are two use cases where uh, you can actually start using these fairly quickly. The first use case uh, is retention. A uh, lot of, Money is spent on branding for acquisition. But what about your existing customers? Are you essentially getting those few seconds every day in their mind? Branding for retention. Most brands are not doing that today. So let's think of this new category, info mails, what we talked about with EMS. It's an alternative to trans and promo mails. Content is what is driving the attention and the attention converts into a daily habit of opening the mails, leading to top of the mind recall. So if you're a pharma brand, for example, you could send out daily health tips. So these are just some examples of what uh, the subject would look like. And you would have probably 100 words or so, 50 words, 100 words as the content of the mail. Uh, as long as you know one in three mails is useful uh, to the end customer, they will open and they will never unsubscribe. So that's where the top of the mind recall happens. The second idea is reactivation. Now, in any database, which is their email database or even customers, of course, uh, typically a third of the customers are likely to be inactive. <coughs> it's a dormant database. Now, typically what happens is brands, uh, they, they sort of, you've not lost the hotline to them. So you end up reacquiring them, spending a lot of money on Google and Facebook. Instead, Think about how the idea of M's, Microns, and AMP can combine together. Create a short series, three parts, five parts to awaken them. So this is a simple example where we just used M's uh, for, a, for India's, one of India's largest banks, Kotak Bank. So we they used to send out, of course, long mails uh, earlier. What we did was we split that up, made it a little more informative, very simple design. So it can be done at one tenth the time that any other mail creative would take. Day one, sent about, you know, about the 811 savings account. Uh, day two, 
uh, some of the variants in day three, uh, uh, how do you apply or how do you reactivate your account um, there? And this led to a 40% increase in open rates. So great response. And you do this again and again, uh, customers will start seeing the value that you can provide. So this one, uh, there was no AMP and there was no atomic rewards, but of course you could have a mini form out here or you could have a nomination form or anything to act, to get them to start um, entering the info right there. So that's where AMP comes in and you could add rewards into this mail. So to summarize, focus on attention, the upstream of transactions. No one's really doing it today. Everyone's focused on the transaction. But if you don't get the upstream, you are not going to get the transaction. So emails and microns are two great innovations to help drive email engagement. EMS, it's a new class of informative emails, short series and telling a story. Microns are emails with gamification, the idea of atomic rewards. Combined with AMP. So this triad, I think is very, very powerful and they have the potential to transform the way we think of emails today. EMS, microns and AMP. This is a powerful, uh, a threesome triad, which can really drive email engagement to a different level. Use this to solve MarTech's three R's, retention, reacquisition, and reference. And if you can do that, you're going to lay the foundation as a brand to creating an exponential, forever profitable growth business. So um, I've written a lot on these themes over the last year or so. You can go to my blog, rajeshjain.com um, and slash, if you add slash marketing, uh, you'll, you'll find lots of essays on these ideas which dig deeper into all of the concepts that we've spoken about today. You can of course uh, feel free to write to me, rajesh at netcorecloud.com. I'll be glad to answer uh, questions right away. And of course, if you email to me later on. Thank you very much. Back to you, Ravi. Hello, sir. Uh, so, sir, we have a few questions from the audience. Uh, one question is, how can EMS be used in automated journeys for prospective customers? Okay. So, uh, prospective customers basically would be people where you would have an email ID and they've probably not yet become a full-fledged customer. So, here's an idea that you could work on. Uh, when people come to your website um, and they're just about to exit, Ask them for their email ID. So you're basically getting a prospect there and ask them what they would like to receive. Instead of saying that, look, join our email list, maybe give them three options of content. Maybe tell them that, look, you know, we can send you a seven day series if it's personal finance on how to manage your finances better. Uh, if it's a pharma company, the health example, uh, how to uh, basically uh, uh, stay more healthy. So essentially the moment you make it informative, people are more likely to open, give you their email ID and open the connection with you. And then what you can do is once you've got that hotline, once you've got their attention, then you can further use um, AM-based mails, et cetera. Keep it going at the same time every day and then figure out what are their interest areas. Don't start pushing for a, uh, for a, for a product sale right away. Build that engagement, build that brand, send mails out for 10, 15 days. And then track, you know, I think you'll, you'll start seeing, they'll want to probably click and read more by coming into the website. And that's how you start building a very healthy and long-term uh, long relationship. Ravi? Yes, so we have another question. Uh, will Atomic Rewards need to work across brands? Yes. Atomic Rewards will need to work across brands because the actions that uh, are taken by a single brand or by, by a customer for a single brand will not be enough. I mean, let's say I get 10 emails in a month, uh, maybe I collect 10 mu. But if I do that across uh, um, uh, 10, 20 brands, I'm now aggregating 100, 200 mu, which is a sizable collection. Uh, and then you can use that in the mu shop for, for a great set of rewards. So it's the way if you think about airlines, what they've done, uh, they know you don't fly I mean, every week or so, you know, except of course the top end business travelers. Um, but they are giving you points, but they've also created a whole ecosystem around them to uh, uh, for where, where you can earn, more, uh, uh, earn points, credit card spends, hotels, restaurants, etc. The same idea comes here. Get new to work, atomic rewards to work across brands. And there are multiple opportunities to earn. And then 
that drives the program. That makes it a habit. The moment you see uh, in your inbox, uh, five out of 10 mails that you're receiving essentially has the mu in there. You'll be curious. You'll want to read them. Once you see points being added up, that's where the gamification element starts to come in. So it has to be pan brand. And that's the real opportunity which is there uh, 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 in the industry to create effectively uh, what I call an atomic rewards coalition. So multiple brands coming together to drive inbox attention and engagement. Right. Um, so we have another question. Uh, it's, he asked, what are the two things that marketers need to keep in mind before they set up M's for their customers? Yeah. So I think you've got to be clear on what is the outcome that you would like. Uh, so here's an example. So typically, if you take your best customers, um, uh, or say the rest customers, first figure out which category of customers you want to be able to target. And then what is the type of content that you want to be able to send to them? What is the thing that they would be interested in? Okay, so this is very different from your promotional mails that you are doing. Okay, so maybe something they've browsed on the internet, on, on your website, or looked for in your app, linked with the products that you are selling. Make something informative. In the ideal scenario, uh, I would take the best customers because they are your most valuable customers. If a single best customer churns, it's a very expensive proposition to get another customer to replace that customer. The lifetime value of best customers is very high. So what I would do is start with the best customers. Think of a category where you can actually become a daily utility in their life forever. So you want a category where you can send 365 mails in a year, one mail every day, which they have a very high likelihood of opening and it's 15 seconds, 30 seconds. So that is where they are not going to, they don't have to spend, you know, make a decision that, oh, there's going to be a long mail. I'll read it later. And that later never comes. It's just a few headlines. It's a few words, but it's words of wisdom, okay? words which will benefit the end customer. It showcases your brand in front of them. So that's how I would begin. Another category, of course, that we spoke about um, could be reactivation. Uh, third category could be um, sort of just pre-purchase that we spoke about. That a person, uh, so let's say you're a travel uh, uh, company. Uh, a person comes in and uh, sees a destination. And instead of just saying that, hey, you know what? Uh, here's an offer on a destination. Maybe you send out uh, five or seven mails over the next five to seven days telling them more about the destination. What are the places to see? Maybe a little bit of history. Maybe make it a quiz. Ask them two or three questions. You get the engagement going. You are there in their minds every day for a few seconds. And hopefully on the seventh day, then you can say, hey, you know what? You've engaged with us. Here's a great offer for you. So there are multiple scenarios you know, for M's, pre-purchase, post-purchase, just retention branding over the, for a long time over the year. And of course, reactivation. <laughs> There's another question. Uh, he asks, what are the use cases of M's, M's in B2B? Same teams. The same ideas that we talked about for B2C will work absolutely fine in the B2B world also. So if you think about it, the three R's that we spoke about in the context of MarTech or B2C world, retention for branding. So if you have B2B customers, is there something you can send every day where the customers value that relationship. Okay, so um, in the case of like Netcore, for example, one idea that we could look at is sending email tips, design templates, design ideas, or uh, 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 say Valentine's Day is coming up. Here are five ideas just prior to Valentine's Day. So essentially informative, something which makes the person receiving it want to open the mail. It's not going to take too long to consume but it keeps the brand recall very high. So that's where uh, retention comes in. Reactivation is true even in B2B businesses where there are many customers who basically go dormant. Uh, we, are keep, we keep sending them mails out, uh, but they're not the, uh, the uh, you know, promotional type of stuff. So maybe you send out short mails like M's. And especially now with the two additional things, the AMP, which makes it interactive. You can have carousels, you can have form fills, uh, you can have uh, quizzes that you can do. Uh, there. Uh, you can get feedback through there. So AMP is a very powerful uh, add-on to M's, And then the atomic rewards, which adds the gamification. So these three things taken together can completely transform the uh, relationship uh, and the brand customer relationship, even in the B2B world. 
Um, so there's one last question. Uh, he asked, well, how can marketers action this? I think we've already answered this question and throughout this, all these questions. I'll, I'll just uh, sort of summarize it. It's a great way to end our uh, webinar today. Um, I think for marketers to action it, first, look at the use case which you want to solve. And I think uh, uh, two of the cases that we spoke about, uh, retention of your best customers, so branding for retention and reactivation are two great places to begin. Uh, you can also look at smaller use cases like pre-purchase, post-purchase, once you have the journeys on an automation platform, they'll keep running. So figure out the use case. Uh, then you'll need to figure out which segment, of course, you send to. And third is the content creation. Now, the good thing about content creation, they're very simple mails. They're short mails. So it's going to take you a fraction of the time to basically create it. Many of them will have text or a, a small amount of text and a small image. That's it. That's how you can get this thing going. Uh, Netcore will be coming out with two very interesting uh, uh, initiatives very soon. And uh, we will talk to you about those soon. Uh, the Atomic uh, Rewards Coalition. So we can get multiple brands together. If you are interested, do let us know. And we'll be love to engage with you. And um, a unique idea called Progency, where we can make these things happen for you in parallel with what your brand, what your uh, marketing teams are already doing. We can do this in parallel. And uh, uh, basically just the way the ad tech world works, it's a MarTech agency linked with all the goodies that we have, all the products that we have, all the uh, uh, learnings that we have and essentially get you the KPIs that you want. All yes, right. Uh, all right. So talking about the next session, so uh, let's end the session here. It was, it was a wonderful session. Thank you so much for coming onto this uh, episode, Rajasa. It was great having you here. Thank you. And I'm sure our audience also loved having uh, listening to your uh, brainchild topic, which is atomic rewards. Uh, so next session we have, so next week, the same time we have Yogesh Kulkani of Netcore speaking about AI and email. Uh, he he'll talk about the, the progress in AI and how it is specifically made for, and the match, how it is specifically made for marketers and how can marketers make the most out of AI. So uh, stay tuned for the, for the next episode and please join the same link next week. All right. Thank you so much. And if you would like to know more about Netcore and also Atomic Rewards, please uh, respond in the poll down below and we'll get back to you. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Signing off.